Which brings us to the trial of Shepard. Shepard is accused of abandonment of post by the Alliance and the Spectres, destruction of Alliance property and partial death of his crew on the Normandy, crimes against humanity on Pharos, treason working with a terrorist organization. Shepard is then given an Elcor defense attorney and must start building up his defense as well as his defense or plan against Cerberus. Talking to Udina gives us the option of talking to counselors directly. This serves two purposes, one to make sure that background deals that ensure Shepard's innocence regardless of the trial is maintained, and two to finally show proper evidence to the homeworlds of the Council civilizations about the Reapers. We can ask Miranda to research the motives of Tim picking out our squad mates and acquire intel on that. We can then meet up with Chorbin to discuss the research intel he discovered about the Keepers. Morden can then research this, finding a direct link between the Keepers and the Collectors. We can go to the Embassy and meet with the Hanar, Elcor, and Volus ambassadors and ask to speak with their heads of government, the Illuminated Primacy, the Counts of Dakuna, and the Vol Protectorate. We can then meet with the Asari Counselor, finally. If you have enough PR to properly charm and intimidate them, you can ask them to meld. If not, you can bring Samara with you and she will force you to bond, and the Council will finally believe in the Reapers. You can then communicate with the Asari Republic and its matriarchy. The Tyrian Counselor is a bit more difficult to persuade, so you'll have to throw a lot more intel at him. You can then get to talk to the Tyrian Hierarchy. The Salarian Counselor already knows about the Reapers, and lets you talk to the Salarian Union immediately. You can then meet with the Human Counselor, and then talk directly to the Prime Minister of the Systems Alliance. During this time before the trial, you can help out Samara with her backstory, which involves meeting the consort. It seems Shepard's destiny is now intertwined with Samara's, and the consort gives you new intel on where to find Morinth. As well, Zaid's backstory gets some exposition, and you're off chasing down a lead on the Doctor, which nets you some classified Cerberus intel on experiments on children. The trial starts, and you can have a series of evidence and several witnesses talk for or against you, and for or against Cerberus. You can get Admiral Hackett, and even persuade Tim to appear in that glowy hologram thing like that Saren used to have. So, if you're found innocent, Shepard publicly gets his Alliance Inspector status back, or Guilty gets it removed. He'll then meet the Council in private, and be released based on the influences of the various homeworlds leaders you coerced. As for Cerberus, depending on your plan, you can get them to be pardoned, be in charge of the Council's security if you're on a pro-Cerberus plan, Continue to make Tim a fugitive and have all legal assets and existing cells work for Shepard if you're on an anti Cerberus plan, which decreases your options with Miranda as a source of intel, as well as making the SR2 crew exempt and making a splinter group out of Cerberus that works for Shepard. If you're on a unified galaxy plan, you can appoint Hackett as being in charge of the Council's security, whose focus is to stop the Reapers. Now starts up the second stage of exploration, where you're finishing off optional backstories and relic collecting, getting it prepared for that suicide mission. Provided you did Zaid's backstory, you can head on over to Pragya, where Miranda and Zaid come along. Regardless of what happened at the trial, Zaid and Miranda will want to have a few words with Tim about Project Future. You can head on over to Haystrom and finish off Daro Zen's backstory. She wants to find a Geth relic. And you happen to run into a Rachni rep, and yes, it's a real Rachni. Of course, if you bring Okir along with you, he'll want to fight it, so you have to either let him, or you'll have to fight him yourself. And thus concludes Samara's series of backstories as we hunt down Morinth to four different planets. They're all chase scenes, so we eventually catch up to the running Asari figure, only to find out they're decoys. Turns out she was hiding on Pharos with the followers of Vigil. This must also be finished in order for the eighth dream sequence to conclude, as it is a resolution to Samara's backstory. And no, you can't get Morinth. Though not optional, you can do this mission any time during the exploration phase. This is the Collector Cruiser, which is like a mini suicide mission. In this case, based on the suicide mission plan we've chosen, we can either fight the cruiser and destroy it, or fight it and board it. The initial fight will always be won, but how much damage you take is based on how many ship upgrades you've got, as well as a subplot that involves mining the Omega-4 relay. If you choose to destroy it, it is completely possible to lose the game if you don't have any ship upgrades. If you just have a few, then a few members of the support team will get killed. You can also call on some of your faction support ships to help in destroying the cruiser. If you choose to board it, your shipmates must have a high level of camaraderie, along with a high skill for the appropriate roles you put them in, or at least one squad mate will die. This should show the player just how crazy and difficult the real suicide mission should be. This also determines whether Shepard gets injured, put in a coma, or has life-threatening injuries as they heroically save members of their squad. In order to heal his wounds, Samara has to bond with Shepard, and Shepard, fearing for the worst, decides to share his cipher with Samara, as it is needed to find and understand the remaining Prothean dreams. 
Another main plot point is the flotilla, Tali's trial, which I like to call In the Lair of Shoei Agadashlu. Here we get a whole list of subplots with the Alaray Captain, Han Geral, Shalaran, and Zell Chorus. The most important is with Daro Zen, where she has to create the Geth rewrite program. And Shorei, I mean Shalaran, and Daro Zen have a rather large scuffle. Anything to get these two women passionate in the same conversation is good enough for me. Now, if you're on a pro Cerberus plan, Tim will send an email recommending you bring Daro Zen along with you. Of course, you do have some serious dialogue checks since you're not only bringing along a Geth, but also an exile. Use your imagination here as loads of great dialogue can come from arguing down the Alarai captain on how to deal with a Geth problem. They're not going to take too kindly to that, but that's why the conflict would be good. This is where Daro Zen and Legion really get to shine. Daro Zen gets to shout down some admirals, and Legion gets to explain why they don't trust the Quarians. And this is all under the guise of not just liberating the Alarai, but finally solving the entire Geth problem. The plot follows the same as before. You need to defend Tally, so you board the Alarai. You then assign roles to Tally, Cal Rieger, two Quarian marines, and your squadmates. Only this time, it's linked with Legion's backstory, which involves a choice. You can either destroy or rewrite the entire Geth population. Remember, the true Geth are the ones that worship the Reapers, so you'd be destroying or rewriting 95% of all Geth. The rewrite is only because of Daro Zen's program. While the delete command comes from the Geth relic you encounter at the end of all the messy experiments Rael Zora was conducting. So even if you didn't take Legion with you, you can still terminate all true Geth. There's a subplot aboard the Normandy where if you pair up Daro Zen with another researcher for making the rewrite program, they'll discover she's planning to use the program to turn the Geth into her slaves. You can ultimately confront her about this and decide to go along with it, or get Legion involved she ultimately agrees to whatever choice you make. So the outcome of Tally's trial ends up either destroying, enslaving, or making all Geth no longer worship the Reapers, and making them peaceful. Thus, you end the war between the Quarians and their quest for their homeworld, or giving all the evidence of the rewrite program and Rail's experiments to the Admiralty Board, or not telling them about not finding anything. This has quite a nice twist if you do or do not know about Daro Zen's enslavement plot. This ends in Tally being acquitted, getting her exiled, or making her an admiral. If she becomes an admiral, you now have a voice with the Quarian fleet, and after taking back her homeworld, her second order is to prepare with the war with the Reapers. You also get a Quarian rep, Cal Rieger, and if you reveal that Daro Zen has solved the Geth problem with the rewrite program, she's no longer exiled. She'd probably be very, very thankful about it, too. You also get to pick up that Geth relic Rail was researching. And we finally get to the suicide mission. So now we're all set to go. Before we got here, though, it might have been important to crank up our reputation with the factions by doing some side quests, finish getting some relics, finish up all our research and ship upgrades like the Clendigan weapon, and finally have our last dream session with the Collector General. If Shepard has built the Clendigan weapon, they can use it and destroy the base, the derelict Reaper, and then the Reaper relay. However, this leaves the Normandy disabled. Thus, Shepard has to call in reinforcements from his factions and the Citadel. The attack happens in three waves from the Collector Cruiser, the true Geth ships, and a combination of Collector and Geth forces. You can order a fleet to engage the enemy, while the rest protect the Normandy. Obviously, some factions are better than others at attacking the Collectors and Geth. If Shepard also saved the Council Mass Effect 1 and successfully talked to two-thirds of the Council race homeworlds, then a Reaper does end up coming through the Reaper relay. Luckily, Shepard can signal the Destiny Ascension to fire its Clinton gun, effectively destroying the Reaper. If the destruction plan is chosen, but Shepard didn't build or decided not to use the Clinton weapon, the various factions Shepard has will jump through the relay with him and help in destroying the opposing forces. You can then order a fleet or the Normandy to destroy a structure, as well as engage in combat. Of course, if you run out of fleets, you lose. Again, if Shepard saved the Council and contacted two-thirds of the Citadel race homeworlds, the Destiny Ascension will appear and destroy the Reaper that appears through the relay with its normal main gun. It just gets destroyed in the process unless you actually research the Klinigan weapon. If the recovery plan is chosen, you can choose to start saving the three structures in any order you prefer. For choosing to save the Collector base, if less than two Prothean relics were researched, Samara will die and everyone will have to abandon trying to recover the base. If at least three Prothean relics were researched, Samara or Shepard can stop the base from self-destructing. If three to six Prothean relics were researched, Shepard can save the Collector General's life. If Shepard is not fully developed at level 30 and intends to save the base Collector General, Samara will attempt to sacrifice herself to do so. If Shepard has a high enough Paragon Renegade, he can perform a high PR check and save her and the base. 
If all relics were researched, Shepard can assume control of drones like the Collector General can and control various areas of the base. In choosing to save the Reaper Relay, if the full Geth relics were researched, Bizarro Zen, Legion, and Ukir can stop the Relay from being destroyed. If all the relics were not fully researched, Legion, Daro Zen, and Ukir can be sacrificed. Legion will always try to sacrifice himself first. If his camaraderie with Daro Zen is high enough, she will tell Legion to transfer all of their programs to her suit as it becomes too dangerous for him. The Reaper Relay is one of the many methods of how to stop the Reapers by having them port into a star, or at least having options. So if you still think you have enough manpower to preserve the derelict Reaper, which the Geth turned into their temple, then, if full Reaper relics were researched, then the Clendigan weapon has been fully researched and upgraded on the Normandy, one can stop the derelict Reaper from self-destructing. Legion, Darozen, and Okir can be sacrificed if relics were not fully researched. If Legion was sacrificed before, and Darozen and Okir are still alive, Darozen will sacrifice herself. If the camaraderie between Darozen or Legion and Okir is high enough, Okir will sacrifice himself for their sake. There's lots of ways camaraderie can play out, but this is all based on the idea that enemies or friends will risk themselves for each other, all for the sake of the mission. We contact Emily Wong, where Shepard does a public broadcast and addresses the Reaper threat, something like a combo of the ending of the core and a Babylon 5 speech. This plot has 19 major points or missions, six of them being completely optional. Mass Effect 2's plot has 25 major points or missions, 12 of them being completely optional. This says nothing of the 18 and 7 missions, the Normandy Crash Site, the 5 Firewalker DLC missions, or Overlord DLC. You might be thinking the focus on the suicide mission, that is, making the entire plot, and thus each plot a series of multi-tiered roles to be too involving, or creating mini-suicide missions for military and support characters to develop in a huge training ground too complex, or having multiple gameplay types, or that the constant focus of the main and sub-themes as gameplay and storytelling elements be too much to do, or having choices impact the plot be way too huge a game design to accomplish. And you could be right. It was my, and others' hopes, to look at what Mass Effect 2 was trying to do from a literary and gameplay perspective, while clarifying, adding, and removing elements to make the plot, characters, and overarching plot fit in a more personal, logical, and grandfathered manner. Suffice to say, there were a lot of arguments. After all, the only thing Mass Effect 2 really brought new to the table was the Vanguard charge, and even that was buggy. We strive for what we thought would not break lore, have no retcons, and cover up as many plot holes as possible. To that end, this was a collaborative effort, and I thank all those involved for their support and patience.